Hi there everyone. Today I'm reviewing Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before by Dr. Julie Smith. So Dr. Julie Smith is a clinical psychologist and social media sensation on TikTok and she presents this book advising people on many common mental health problems. This one's been a bestseller so let's see if it provides real practical advice and whether any of it is unique, does it add something truly new in a very heavily saturated field at the moment? But it is perhaps good that mental health advice is a field that's getting a lot more attention when it was a term looked at quite contemptuously. Now science and social perceptions have made strides as to mental health being important and that it's something people need to manage. So how well of a guide is this to that objective? Well, the themes are broad. Chapters include on dark places, on self-doubt, on a meaningful life, on stress. There isn't really one central theme here, and other than really just mental health. Some chapters take a theme such as anxiety and spend one chapter kind of um, elucidating what the problem is. And then including some anecdotes and a one-page summary of bullet points before the, the subsequent chapter answers what you can actually do about that problem. For some people, a book like this might be useful for obvious reasons. They may encounter advice that they weren't previously aware of. But I review a book like this with trepidation because I often anticipate well-meaning but surface-level advice that is probably already present in books elsewhere. But is that really such a bad thing to produce books with similar advice about something that really matters? And perhaps that is still useful. But here my job is basically to review this book on its own merits. And we are kind of pitting it against the other books on the sort of store shelf, I guess, or on Amazon, I guess. Um, you know, how is this book against the opposition? What kind of unique value does it represent? And so I think those books in this kind of genre that do offer something unique or new are more likely to receive higher scores. As self-help books go then, as you can probably predict, this book does slot right into familiar territory. It's readable using simple and concise language, and there's no real need, obviously, to speak in metaphor or imagery, where, you know, helping people is the main aim of the book. The work is fully sourced and backed up with scientific references, which is really nice to see, and it's not always the case in a book like this. I think my main problem is the advice is often a bit simplistic. It is expert advice by somebody that is accredited in their field, but it's often quite bare bones for some of these problems. This is perhaps unsurprising from how I've written this review, but take, for example, the problems are kind of troublesome thoughts and mood pitfalls. The main advice is to reflect on your thought biases, say, to keep a journal, to write down the thoughts, feelings and sensations in the moment, and practicing mindfulness. If one had to write a list of mental health cliches, then, you know, practices such as these from CBT and journaling have got to be right up there. It's not that they're bad advice at all. Mind you, it's just that if you picked up several books on the topic, you're bound to be seeing these crop up in almost every one. I'd also say the format of the book is so simplistic that if you wanted to delve deeper, which, you know, you probably would have to if you were having significant problems with something like anxiety or depression, you'd probably need another book or two on the topic. However, I did find that this level of simplicity is sometimes of benefit such as when the advice is broken up by diagrams or bullet point toolkit lists to present the information succinctly. By contrast, the coverage of the problem of death as a topic was interesting, you know, exploring mindfulness about where we are in life, what we want to do, our values and priorities. It still perhaps isn't anything new, but it was written well. And generally, I do think the book is very cogent and flows well despite its breadth. Similarly, despite much of the advice not being unique, 
you do read and often find a particular line that resonates with you personally, which really is how most self-help books tend to work. So in terms of final score, you know, this book does provide solid advice. It's scientifically backed and sourced, and it's likely a bestseller because of Dr. Judy Smith's recognition online. It provides good advice in a simplistic format. I do wonder, though, if it is too broad to give adequate depth to such problems, but it would at least give a reader a starting point, maybe even just to identify where their problems might lie. The thing is, you just shouldn't expect anything new, and if you did suffer from one of the problems in here, like grief or anxiety or depression, you're probably better off getting a book that's fully devoted to the topic rather than, you know, a book with one chapter on it. So I'm giving this one a 6 out of 10. I don't think it does a massive an amount that's new, but it is well written, it's well backed up, and I do think there's good advice in here. So thanks for watching. You know, there's plenty more psych psychology reviews and sort of self-help books coming up so stay tuned for that like and subscribe and thanks for watching cheers